I don't know what she's been drinking, but I want some of it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been sick the last couple of weeks, so seeing somebody with energy and frequency and everything, that's exciting. <laughs> so when I started thinking about this talk, and choices as opposed to resolutions, I went back over my life and I realized I had never, ever, my whole life, completed a resolution that I had set. And I thought, God, that's kind of bad. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of opportunity to do it. And I started looking at it some more. I tried to figure out why. What was it that kept me and everybody else from making them work? We all used to make them. And they could be anything from I'm going to be whatever, an astronaut, or I'm going to be a teacher, or I'm going to lose weight, or I'm going to go to the gym. I can't count how many gym memberships I never used. <laughs> because, you know, you always feel so ugly and everything, so I didn't go there. But no, no, no. So I started looking at it in light of goal setting. And if my resolution was like my big goal, why wasn't I able to do it? Because I can set goals. I can do goals. And then I realized that sometimes those big goals are too big. It's too much and it's overwhelming. And that when we focus on the now and what the now is, the now is this moment, and all I can do in this moment is make a choice for what I'm going to do in the next moment. So I want to talk about choices in our daily lives. What do we do? And we make a lot of them. We choose to get up. We choose to eat. We choose to clean ourselves. We choose to go to work. We make all these choices. Every day we're making them. And today is, you know, a compilation of all the choices I made in this lifetime that got me to this point. And they weren't always good choices. Making a choice doesn't mean it's going to be good. Making a choice just means you're doing something and you're not stagnant and you're not stuck in a rut. And sometimes it's better to make a bad choice than not to make anything, because making anything is going to be your cause and effect or consequences. And you're just stuck there, and then you let it come. You have no empowerment, no control, no purpose. So we choose daily. Think about it. We have the power to choose what we want. We are that powerful. And most of the time, we don't think we are. We think we're just flowing along and life is happening. But like when Maggie did the meditation this morning, didn't you feel the power in that? There was a presence that was there that we all felt. I've never heard us all so quiet and so in-depth in a meditation as we were this morning. It was wonderful. We have the power to create life, to take life. We can kill. We can birth. That's pretty powerful to be able to do those things. To have that power over life and death in each and every one of our hands, however we choose to use it. What if we took that power and empowered ourselves minute by minute every day? Because that's what we're choosing. Every day we choose life or we choose death by the choices we make. Is it a choice that's going to contribute to our life and our living? Or is it a choice that's killing us? When I was drinking, it was a choice to kill myself. And when I stopped <laughs> drinking, it was because I either had to have the courage to kill myself, or I had to do something different. So we make those choices every minute, every second of every day, life and death. Think back to your, this morning. You made a choice to come here. To me, that's a life. That's a livingness. That's healthy. We choose over and over what it's going to be. We have the power to enjoy ourselves, to be what we want to be, to be happy. We also have the power to choose depression, our addiction, or whatever else we want to choose. But I've been on both sides, and I've got to tell you, the living this is a lot more fun. <laughs> it's a lot more enjoyable. To drive here and to see the beauty and to enjoy the beauty, instead of 
seeing the misery, instead of seeing a dead tree, to be able to see the whole forest and the beauty of it and how it all goes together. We choose who and what we want to be. We argued in seminary all the time about whether we're puppets or not. <laughs> and we'll probably argue about that some more this year. We start tomorrow. But for a puppet, we choose to be a puppet, right? Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what did you choose this week? If things aren't going well in your life, what choices have you been making that you could change? Stella, I understand, Angie said, that what do you say when you get up every morning? You say it's going to be a wonderful I'm, no, day. No, I'm grateful for this day and the love and abundance that comes my way. Did you hear that? She says, I'm grateful for this day and the love and abundance that comes my way. <laughs> Telling the secrets. Yes. Nice. But Those are think nice. of that. <laughs> she makes that choice every day. I've never seen her unhappy. It's almost like I want to touch her. I asked her one time, do you have down days? Somebody's got to have a down day. But what if we made that choice every day? First, I make a choice to get up. Then I make a choice to declare what my day is going to be. What if every day of my life I chose to be happy and abundant? Think of what we all could have. That's just two choices every day that we've made right there, two choices. And if we don't get in our way, I bet we could all have it. We're that powerful, and it's that simple what we have to choose to do. Some days we're not going to make them best. Everybody wants ice cream. Everybody wants sweets. There's chocolate in there. Everybody will have something sweet, I bet. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that it's a bad choice. Choices don't mean that we have to have this strict discipline where we don't enjoy life. There's a moderation. There's a line between that. We can choose to enjoy everything around us. We come in here and we choose to come. <clears throat> We choose to interact with people. We choose to hug and to love and to share. That is one of the healthiest things we probably all do all week long. Hugging and sharing and touching. In the Fresno church, they used to have a couple of the older women. And they made this statement one time. It really shocked me. They came to church every weekend because that was the only time they ever got touched. <laughs> so you can make a choice to not have anyone in your life. Or you can make a choice to go where there are people, where there, you can feel alive, where you, you can have friends and share, and be happy. Are you happy with your job? What are you saying to yourself each day when you go to that job? I hate my boss. I hate my work. What do you, what do you say to yourself? I see you laughing. Nothing? <laughs> Nothing. They make that's it. <laughs> but... I can remember many days dreading going to different jobs because of how they did things or who was there or what I had to do that day. But if I had had the habit of choosing to say the things like Stella does, I bet looking back that I wouldn't have been that miserable. I can create what I want. I can create to be happy. Look at Frankel in the, in the concentration camp. Mm -hmm. He made the choice of how he was going to live through that. We all have that power, that choice. We can keep, be happy no matter what anybody says. And think how crazy you'll drive people. <laughs> it could be fun. <laughs> but we have to choose that. So many times we feel that it's not worth it. We feel less than. We feel like, why even bother to try? Because i got to tell you that slowly dying is worth trying because slowly dying is the most miserable place to ever be. It's so dark and it's so alone and it's so, the only word I can think of is it's yucko. You know, it's not a good place to be, but we have to choose. So look at what's going on in your life. You got an illness, work's not working for you. <coughs> what? You've got family that you're not getting along with you. What could you choose to do differently? Because it's not about winning. It's not who has the last word, or who does it right, or who has the best score, or who makes the most money, or who has the most clothes. It's not about any of those things. It's about what are we feeling inside? Who and what are we? 
What do we bring to the table? That's all we have. This room and this mic and all of this doesn't mean anything if I didn't bring something to share. It would be worthless for you to be here. We all have that. We all bring something when we share. We bring ourselves, we bring our colors. We're a puzzle, we're a quilt. It takes all of us. But we have to choose to show up. We have to choose to come in with a smile. We have to choose to interact and to share. We also, when the day isn't going well, have to reach out and choose to share. To let people know it's not a good day and I'm having issues and maybe I need help today. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing weak about that. We're people. We have ups and we have downs. We have good days. We have bad days. But what we're looking for is how is life going for you? Is it like this or like this? I much prefer this. I got tired of the slows of despair. They were <clears throat> so dark I never want to go back there. But I had to choose to get help and to make a difference. We all have to do that. So look at what's going on in your life. What could you change? Could you make a phone call and reach out to someone you haven't talked to? Someone you're restrained from? Could you admit that you were wrong, even if you weren't? Who cares who's right? <clears throat> what's important is the relationship. I just went through this with my daughter and my granddaughter. I kept saying, what's, keep your eye on what's important. Do you want a relationship with her, or do you want to be right? Well, fortunately, she chose the relationship, and they're getting it back. But somebody has to make the first step. Mm -hmm. Somebody has to go in and say whatever needs to be said. Do you remember every argument you've ever had? Do you remember who was right or who was wrong or what it was about? Of course, there's the one that traumatized you for life that you'll remember forever. forever. But other than that one, what do you remember? I want to remember loving relationships. I want to remember fun with friends and living and caring and sharing. I don't want to remember the misery. The memories are there, but I don't have to harp on it. I don't have to let it fester. Mm -hmm. I don't have to let it rule my life. Yeah. I don't have to be just reacting to life. I don't want to react anymore. I don't want to bounce around anymore. I want to be part of it. I want to reach out and grab it and enjoy it. But that's a choice. I had to make all the little second-by-second -second decisions to get me through healing, to get me through the help, to get me through building new habits and a new life and creating a new identity. I had to rebirth myself. <clears throat> but you know what? I didn't throw everything out. I only let go of the things that I didn't want in my life anymore. I kept what I considered the good stuff. And a lot of that was the wisdom and the lessons that I learned from what happened. But that was a choice. Second by second, minute by minute, we've got to get up. We'll get Stella or somebody to send out, and you send us an email that what Stella says, because I like it. It says it all in a short, sweet sentence. Would you say it again? Because Let's have Stella say it. No. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? I'm grateful for this day and all the love and abundance that comes my way. What else could you ask for? She yeah. says one other thing, too, though. Uh -huh. She didn't say it a few minutes ago. I'm going to be the best that I can be. I love that. And the best that I can be is not perfect. It's who I am, the best that I can be. I don't have to set expectations or standards that I can fail at. You know, another thing I'm not going to be able to do. And we need that so much. The marketing in this country, the advertising, makes us feel that we're not enough. We never measure up. We're not good enough. What can we do? How do we do it? What's missing? Especially if you live in California. Everything's got to be young and tanned and look a certain shape. And you've got to eat healthy and you've got to do all this stuff.